What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? If you want to come see the Red Rocket Live, I've got a couple of tour dates left. Right now, I'm currently in Indianapolis, Indiana, doing my thang. Then I take a break for some turkey time, like you know. And like I said, California, I have a few dates left. Uh, people in Southern California have been asking, and I've said it a million times. I've only got a few dates left until I take a break from that, and I have to go on the road and do my big Red Rocket tour in 2020. I've got uh, December 6th and 7th at the Bray Improv. I have the um, December uh, 9th at um, December 9th in the Comedy Store, and then uh, the 14th is going to be at the Ice House in Pasadena. So come out um, and get that thing on. And then 2020, baby, the Red Rocket tour. Uh, we've promoted, we've talked about it. We're so excited about hitting all these cities. Go to andrewstantino.com for tickets. Um, you can find out all those dates. We're adding dates. I know Boston's coming. Philly's going to go up there soon. San Diego's going to be popping up at the end of the tour. Um, we're also trying to get to New York. We're trying to get to, um, Texas. We're trying to fill in all these places. So don't fucking worry. And for all my, uh, over the, over the water friends, all my Ireland people, I'm trying to come to Ireland and England at the end of next year. We're trying to work it out. So stop freaking the fuck out. We're going to make it happen. Um, but in the meantime, enjoy the episode. All right, guys, I've talked about this before. You got to clean up your nut sack. You don't want to nick your nuts. Uh, we've talked about this a million times, and I really do mean it. I actually had a good conversation with my friend Mike the other day about the ball butter uh, for keeping your nuts soft and silky and smooth. You want to keep them nice for you and for your partner. Um, you got to go to manscaped.com. Go get some, um, some wonderful trimming equipment to keep your tool clean. Use the tools that keep your tool nice and clean. Uh, I've, I've talked about them because I believe in them. I promote them. All their stuff is really cool. It comes with a wonderful little tote bag. Um, but I don't know what the real word is for that. A dop kit. I think that's what it is. I don't know who, who was dop. Whatever the case may be, you got to go, um, try, uh, the trimmer from, from Manscaped because it's, it's amazing. It's mobile, beautiful and portable charge with a, a little, little baby USB charger in there. Um, and it's easy to take on the road. Uh, with you, which is what I like, because I have uh, one for my face and one for my nutsack. You know that I can't trim my face with the same thing I use to trim my nuts. That's gross, and it's quite honestly appalling because I would never put my cock on my face. Uh, but do yourself a favor, go to manscaped.com and use the promo code whiskey. You know how to spell it; it's the name of the show. And if you don't, come on, man, pick up a book, uh, and you're going to get yourself twenty percent off free shipping if you use the promo code whiskey. Again, that's manscaped.com. Use the promo code whiskey to get yourself twenty percent off and free shipping. Look, I'm not a cook, I'm not a chef, uh, but but the one thing I do like is good knives. Uh, they are important to me. I do honestly believe this. Having shitty kitchen knives uh, makes a big difference when you're trying to cut some meat up, you're chopping up the meat. Um, Kamikoto knives are fucking unreal. Um, they are incredible. Each knife comes in an individual, beautifully hand carved box. It's dry. It's like uh, 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 ash wood box. Um, and they only use steel uh, sourced from Japan. Each blade is crafted uh, with special techniques uh, that have been honed for uh, generations of knife smiths. Um, and Kamikoto knives are uh, these single bevel edge knives that achieve unbelievably sharp edges. I mean, you can feel it when you touch this thing. It's, it's remarkable. The way it cuts, the way it feels in your hand, the weight of it. Um, the sheer difference in using a shitty knife and a good knife is so obvious uh, that once you do it, you understand it's easier to cut meat with, it's easier to cut anything with vegetables as well, but I'm, I'm a meat eater, so I eat meat. But um, it is, it is, it's made such a massive difference that chefs around the world love this thing. Um, Michelin star restaurants usually use something to this caliber, if not a Kamikoto knife, something that's similar because it's, it's the best of the best. The sharpening white stones also keep it nice and fresh. You don't want them to go dull in your kitchen. Um, and when I first used them, I was blown away by the level of smooth and efficiency that I was able to cut stuff with. It was just so clean, man. It made me feel like I was really knowing what I was doing, even if I was just cutting up raw ramen noodles. Uh, but uh, truth be told, Kamikoto makes a phenomenal knife. Um, you know, anything sourced from Japan, I like. You know how much I've talked about how much I love Tokyo. Um, it's incredible. Uh, the Yangiba knife is a 13-inch knife, and I'm probably not saying it right, but holy shit, this thing is dope. It either could be a defense weapon or something used in the kitchen. Um, but you should do yourself a favor and go ahead and buy some Kamikoto knives. They're offering listeners 25% off uh, their top Black Friday offers. So if you go to uh, kamikoto.com slash whiskey, you can get yourself 25% off. And Kamikoto is K-A-M-I-K-O-T-I-K-O-T-O. 
Um, we will put the link in the description because it's hard to spell. But go to comicoto.com slash whiskey. Use that promo code and get yourself 25% off. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are oh, hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. It's Mr. Mark Norman. Hey. Hey, hey, hey good to hey, be here. Did I scare you on the intro? A little. You came in hot. Yeah. Which I, I'm not against. No, yeah, you like coming in hot. Yeah, I like coming in a lot of things. But I'd rather, you know, you come in hot than these NPR queefs who are like, so, how are you? So, should we start that way instead? Let's Just try that. A bit? Let's try that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, back to Whiskey Ginger. My uh, guest today... He's uh, one of my favorite people <laughs> on earth. I say that for all of my get our guests. Um, I already feel like I'm me too. It's Mr. Mark Norman. This feels and bad. You're, and you're getting me too. <laughs> Cheryl, come on in. Oh no, it's not Cheryl. So let's uh, um, let's clear the air. Uh, yeah. Everyone thinks because of the Cleveland television interview that you're gay and you're not gay. <laughs> I think they stopped doing interviews because of no. you. No. Oh yeah. Come on. Segura's got a great one. D- Bobby Lee. There, she's still she's the best interviewer in morning TV, if you ask me. Do you still do morning TV? Oh yeah, I do it every week, and I hate it. And I I've done a million of those, but no one ever put them on YouTube, and that one just hit. That's did they put it on YouTube? I I think I asked them to because it went well, and she was such a pro. Uh, whatever her name is, Abigail or yeah. Clarence. Uh, she I don't re- know. really hit home with you, apparently. Yeah, yeah, but she was so good, and uh, she deserves half the anal. I'm gonna let that sit. <laughs> <laughs> I want I want you to have that for a while. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, she uh, she did handle it well. If you haven't seen it, we'll put the link in the description below. And also, you should just Google Mark Norman YouTube because you got a bunch of stuff on YouTube. You're oh, yeah. you're one of these guys, um, a that I hate, and b I resent Jews. you. This is, yeah, you're you're not Jewish. I'm not. I'm not. Stop pretending that you're Jewish just because you look it and have the name of it. Right. Well, Mark, you know, Mark Normanstein. No, but <laughs> you're one of these guys that um, that L.A. guys. Are are kind of infatuated with. I mm. guess I, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but like, you you're you're able to pump out a, a good amount of material uh-huh. often. You change. You're you're prolific is the is the right word. But you pump out a lot of stuff. You do a lot of late night spots. Right. You're always. You guys are always putting more stuff online than us. Well, in the idea of just stand up. Well, it's just funny because you guys are all like Theo Vaughn's a millionaire. Who's Del- Theo Vaughn? Uh, he's this uh, redneck guy. Oh, the hick, the hick guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah man, fucking. Yeah. Yeah, dude, my dad used to fucking <laughs> live inside of a water tower, right. dude. He'd swim to the top, like, every morning for air, just go back down and have babies, dude. <laughs> That's we were pretty born, good. Yeah. yeah, no, he's, yeah, no, truth, but I think, like, you, what's happened, not to harp on it, because I've talked about it before, but I'm always impressed that, like, the late night run that you guys do, um, that a lot of guys do, is, it's awesome to see such good content being put on mm. late night comedy wise because oh, I feel like for a long time oh, yeah. late night spots were bullshit yeah yeah they're, they're kind of bullshit again now like I feel like we're pumping a lot of new people out based on how they look yeah. you know it's all casting now which I'm all for mixing it up but like let's keep it funny there's a lot of funny brown people out there as yeah. well you yeah. know put them on sure don't put the uh, trans in the wheelchair just because he's trans in a wheelchair but, uh, but is he funny though you hope. I mean, maybe if you put a broomstick in the spoke or something. That's always good. He does have that's, cards in there, bicycle cards. Oh, too. that's cool. Isn't I that like the that. irony? He couldn't get on a bicycle. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. the sad part. Right, Are right. You, so, so you think that there's there's a huge like duck dive in in stand-up sets right now on TV? Yeah, but I think it's yeah. coming back around, and I think the, the, the quality, what do you call it, the cream cream pie. The cream rises, and I think people find the good shit. That's why you got your YouTubes and your uh, your interwebs and your podcasts, because everybody finds their, their guy or their gal, and then they just go with the quality. Yeah. Have you found that uh, because of stuff like that, because of late night spots, because of like the TV, the TV sets that you've done, that you're slowly increasing your fan base for the better, or is it just collecting people? Like, Are you getting hardcore fans, or are you getting just... You know, people that are kind of just latching onto the internet fans. I think I'm getting the real, the real people because I'm, I'm a squirrely weirdo. I'm yeah. not for everybody. You know, I, I don't, I don't have it. You know, like some guys like have like Carmichael or Che or, or two, uh, two black guys. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. They just got it. You yeah. know, I don't have it. Or Mulaney has it. Another black guy. Yeah, yeah. 
possibly gay, and uh, <laughs> I wish I, I don't have that. I, I'm, uh, I'm, what do you I'm, mean you don't have it? You have comedic talent. Isn't that all that it is? That's not it. I'm, what it, is it? It is a special thing. It's a, it's a drippy, gooey, semen-y texture that just glistens in the sun. Yeah, and you don't have it. No, I don't have it. And I, I'm aware of that. I, as a kid, I was like, maybe I have it. Maybe I have it. Maybe I got AIDS, but I don't have it. And uh, and you do have AIDS. And I have AIDS. But you don't have it. So you're not going to make it in, as a talent, but you will. I will die. You will die soon. Yeah. Soon. No, medicine's been good. Medicine yeah. Medicine is so good. I don't have that magic, Johnson. I think you do. No, I, don't, I mean, I'm, I'm a funny guy. You're a funny guy. Yeah. I think we can do some zingers and yuck em ups. But I just thought, you know, you, you do these late nights because that's you got to show people, hey, look, I, I can do it. Please book me. Have me. Right. Pay money to see me. But nobody cares. Then you do a big podcast. Changes everything. Yeah, because I think the exposure is more real, right? Like right. people get to know who the fuck you are instead of just. Uh, I, I always, my always, my biggest issue with late night spots was always like, here's the guy you'll never know who they are ever again. It, sure. it, it, you, didn't, you didn't get any taste of the human aspect. Like just because they were a great joke writer didn't mean I understood anything else about them. Right. Because uh, you know you can really have. Um, I mean, look at what roast has done. The roasts have done like anybody can write a great joke for someone to tell. So it's almost like Ah. unless I really latch on to you as a person, yeah, then I don't know who the fuck you are, and I don't care. Writing a joke, the internet writes so many jokes a day, but we can never keep up. Those memes are brilliant. They'll beat. They'll beat anything you've ever written. I know. And so a fat guy falling on a viral video is better than any bullshit we'll spit out. But but look, remember you saw Hedberg on Letterman? You were like, "This is unreal. This guy's amazing." Yeah. And I feel like I thought I could be something like that, but it, it's I'm not on heroin, but I'm not weird enough, I guess. No, it's not that. It's, it was curated. See, I think it was just there were less spots back then, and, and mm. the spots that did exist, they were just more infrequent. That's right. All. That's it, a it, good it, point. it just wasn't this. It wasn't this constant barrage of like, here's someone new, here's someone new, here's someone new. It was more like, and I talked to Swartzen about this. You know, his half hour. Um, was probably one of the best of all time. Killer. I loved and, it. And also that class was incredible. Right? Yes. Like, so like Pablo Francisco's half hour was hysterical. I think it was Kathleen Madigan. Oh, like, she's funny. But it was just so many like great half hours. Whether or not you liked the comedy, they were solid as fuck. Mm-hmm. The half hours were, were just like groomed Dane perfectly. Cook, all yeah. those guys. And, and that, he was the same year. Yeah. So like, I think that's the difference was um, the networks, Comedy Central, all this shit, they used to groom in such a way where the timing was right, it was it was meticulously like watched over to make sure that these people were ready to go and blossom instead of, hey, I'll throw up you know six minutes from a a set that we just taped somewhere right. on TV and it gets kind of lost in the ether and then no one follows or cares and sure yeah and I'm with you but when you do that big pod or that big viral video whatever it is. It is good to have a backlog of, of material that they can go, oh, this guy's got something. Right. And then they come out and see you, and then you kill there. So they're like, oh, this is all worked out. Right. Because you don't want to go, you know, you don't want to see a guy on a podcast and go, I like this guy, I connect with this guy, and then you go out and see him, and it's a dud. Right. So you, you really want the skill right. set. Yeah, you want the balance. you got to have the balance. Yeah. Well, see, like, you and I have known each other, but don't know know each other. Um, I'm a hard guy to get to know. Well, you are, but I'm going to try. Please. Because break, because break I, what I know of you is that you're a, a funny dude. We've known each other for a couple of years. I don't even know how long. I don't know. Maybe yeah, five, six, five, six seven, years. Yeah. yeah. But like all I've known of you is you're funny and I like you and respect you. And that's that's kind of how a lot of this stuff is. You go, I like that dude. He's a funny dude. He's, yeah. But, well, you get a vibe too. You say a right, racial you know. slur and they go, oh, okay. Right. And they say it back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you touch Which, noses. Yeah. Ironically is a weird way to tell who you trust. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. It's like, can I, uh, Mark was on the 15th floor of a Marriott and yelled the N word down into the center hallway and I yelled it back. And yeah, it was like a bat signal. I think you that just was caught it. it. Yeah. I just shot up to the sky and, and we, <laughs> we saved racism. Yeah. No, but you, 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 um, you are evasive though. You are evasive as a dude as far as like letting out your, yeah. why is it? Oh, uh, well, you know, uh, scared of getting hurt, uh, scared of letting people in. I, I gotta, um, I'm like T.I. I keep that hymen up, you know? I don't <laughs> you like to break it. keep on your yeah. daughter's hymen? <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I, I want to, I want to get to know you, but I'm scared of being liked or not liked or whatever, you know? Well, see, I think that's the, I think m- most comics deal. Yeah. Yeah. Most comics deal with that though. They deal with this idea that like, um. Uh, I'm so scared of being hated and or loved mm-hmm. uh, that I'd rather yes. just have this like, you know, I'm uh, funny. You like me because I'm funny, right? And that's, right, right. Yeah. I, it's a hard, listen, it's a hard nut to crack. Where are you born? <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like it's like a, a girl who wants to be pretty because she thinks people will like her because she's pretty. I do that with my act. Yeah. I'm like, I just, I'm just putting on more makeup, putting out more material, and then hopefully people go, I like this guy. Well, well but then but you got to get to know me. And at then, some point, it's got to be you. I guess, yeah. Who raised you? My parents and a, and a transgender nanny. 
Really? Tranny Nanny. Enos. Tr- tranny Nanny. Yeah, yeah. That's ahead of the curve. I know. And my what, parents are open-minded. what city in the United States was New it? Orleans, Louisiana. Right. Mm-hmm. No, I do know that, but what specifically? What's the town name? Uh, well, the, the parish, we call it, is called uh, uh, Treme. Treme. Yeah. Ooh. Pa- you call it a parish? Yeah, it's weird. Old school, religious. Backwards people. Yeah, they're Creole. They're kooky. They're interracial. It's good No, but you sound like you are made... You don't sound like you have this New Orleans thing at all. Like, not no, even a little bit. No. Well, my... I didn't. You sound like Jim Henson made it. <laughs> 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 you, you sounded like a voice test for Jim Henson. You have such like a unique, uh, what do they call it? Uh, broadcast English voice where I um. couldn't. I couldn't pin in journalism. They call broadcasting. I can't pin. I couldn't pin where you're from. The United States. Wow, I'll take it. Maybe that's what I wanted. Yeah, you do. I didn't yes, want yeah, to yeah. Be pinned down. No, yeah, you're free as a bird, baby. Harvey. Yeah, I just. Uh, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I guess uh, New Orleans is also like this kind of liberal hub. You know, you go 10 minutes outside, right. you're eating a gator off of a, a hot tin roof or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's pretty liberal. I, my parents are intellectuals. They're smart as hell. My parents were lawyers and shit. So, uh, yeah, I guess I just built this voice out of something. I don't know. Yeah, that's who, I mean, that you you just, but your parents, uh, you so you come from a very affluent like family, right? I wouldn't say affluent, but we were like N-word rich. Like yeah. we had a, we had a Beamer and it barely ran. We had a we had a, we lived in an old mansion that was dilapidated. My dad bought it and it like didn't have running water and it was a horrible neighborhood. Wow. But outside we looked good. So we got robbed all the time because people thought we were loaded. Really? Yeah, yeah. You, what do you mean you got robbed? Like, you, like, the, like your car got broken into? The, the car house got, got stolen broken? all the time. We got our house broken in. I walked in on a few robberies. I mean, people were just like, oh, they're the white family in the mansion. They must be well off, and we weren't that well off. You know, my parents are like grassroots lawyer. Like, we're going to help the, the, the downtrodden. The common man. Yeah. yeah. And so they weren't making money. Like, they do some pro bono shit. And, uh, what kind of attorneys were they? They were civil. You know, you slip oh, on a boat, gross. you slip in a Walmart. Yeah, yeah gross. Yeah. Bad people. Yeah, bad. And they hated it. They were both miserable. No. They've told me openly, like, I hate my job. I feel like shit every day. And I was like, oh. But they raised a good kid. Yeah, well, we'll see. I mean, I was a fuck up. <laughs> you know, juvie and uh, a You lot went of, to juvenile, huh? Oh, yeah, a couple times. A lot of, uh, what do you call that, vandalism. What, graffiti? Graffiti. I had a tag name. What was your tag name? My tag name was Stank. S T A N K. Yeah, which Shit. I'm still embarrassed about. It should be. That's it. That is embarrassing. Yeah, it was all over my notebooks, and uh, we would break stuff. We would do this thing. We would drive down the street and knock off side view mirrors. Oh yeah, I love that. That was fun. That was like a pastime. For Mailboxes. Us. No, nah, not really mailboxes. Did more you, side you, view. Did you egg houses? We egged houses. We TP'd. We uh, we ran amok. You did it all. Oh yeah! Isn't, isn't egging houses? I, I realized this the other day. It's like the most white privilege thing to throw, <laughs> like good food at a home. Oh yeah! Like you're throwing food at property. It's That's, like just such like a privileged person ruining a privileged person's afternoon. Good point, and kind of abortion-y. Yeah, you're really you doing yeah. about it. Well, that's I'm pro-choice, so that's why. Oh, yeah. I'm fine with egging houses. I'm pro-choice. Same here. You should you should be embarrassed about stuff like that because we all have that. Like I I I, I thought I could rap when I was oh. young. Oh. Yeah. See, that's I never got into that wigger stuff. Because yeah. I grew up in a black neighborhood, so I had enough blackness inside my asshole. Like yeah. you had to kind of seek it out and, and rebel, maybe. No, uh, I just I just lo- no, I loved it. Really? No, yeah, I loved it so much. Wow. Because I'm from the city of Chicago, and then we moved to the western suburbs when my mom got remarried. Uh huh. But I loved the idea of, I loved the idea of just hip hop so much that I wanted to do it. And then I went to this place called Doctor Wax on the. Um, on the west side of Chicago, and I won a freestyle competition. I won a hundred dollars. Yeah, I'd be like seven dudes, all black dudes. Get bro. out of town! You know how mad they were that I won. You're B Rabbit. I'm B Rabbit, baby. Holy shit, mom spaghetti! <laughs> Throw up already, baby. Wow, yeah, that's it, impressive. It was, yeah, it was. I won a hundred dollars, and I fr- I still have the book when I I still have in my um this autograph book of all these old autographs I used to collect of the envelope they gave me the hundred dollars and when I won the freestyle competition. Wow, good for you, man. Shout out to Doctor Wax. It's definitely gone. There's no way they survived the fucking no. the music holocaust. Once you won, they had to. Shut up! They and did close up. Shut yeah, they did. They moved but to fucking. I wonder Iowa. if the black guy, the black rappers, looked at you the way like white comics are like, oh, here we go, the minorities coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, why yeah. you won. Right. You know, because right. you're the ginger. No, I was significantly better than everybody. Excuse me, ginger. Ginger. Yeah, don't hard arm me in my own, my own fucking podcast. <laughs> but uh, no, yeah, they, I was better. I was just better. But my wow, nick, my name right? was Call K A W L. 
Okay, like cauliflower? Not kill them all with laughter. Damn! Embarrassing, no less. That's pretty cool. That's just like stank. Yeah. Yeah, two white, nerdy, dumb things to do. Totally, totally, yeah. Did you think you were a nerd when you were a kid? Oh, yeah, I was a skateboarder, chain wallet. I had those shorts that went down to your ankle. Wait, that doesn't sound like a nerd. That sounds like a, a, cool, that sounds like a cool kid. I guess I wasn't a nerd, but I went to a pretty black school, so I was more of an outcast. Right. Not a nerd. I guess I was like a weirdo. But you weren't a poser. You actually skateboarded. Oh, yeah. Every yeah. day. I mean, we made videos. We we were like, welcome at the skate shop. I had stickers. My whole wall in my part, I mean, my bedroom was just skateboarding and everything. Did you ever lie and say you were sponsored? That was a common lie as kids. They'd I go, did. Yeah, I'm sponsored. Yeah, yeah all the time. Not. And then you say, oh, no, he rides flow for that shop. <laughs> this is yeah. very meta lingo right. for our generation. Of, for people that don't know, when you skateboarded as a kid, getting sponsored was such a vague term. Yes. It just meant someone gave you free shit. Yeah. It's like saying I have a girlfriend in Canada. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Which but, you do. Yes, yes. Which you do, yeah. Yeah, Trudeau. Trudeau. Shout out to Trudeau, baby. Yeah. But yeah, we had a, I had built a half pipe in my backyard. We stole the lumber. I mean, it was real deal shit. Oh, wow. That's cool. A dude I knew, I went, a, a, a guy I made friends with freshman year of high school had a half pipe in his basement. What? I know. That's amazing. Yeah. He was, he, they had some good money. They lived, they lived in a good little house and they had a nice, uh, beautiful basement that they had turned it a, p- a portion of it into a little half pipe I thought that was the coolest wow, thing I've ever seen that's so cool yeah. I love just bringing your like it's very Rogan-y like I like this I'll bring it to my home yeah. I don't have to go to it but that's also parents that are loving and supportive my True. parents would have never I had drums for a while my parents made me throw them away because my mom couldn't take it Wow. Yeah, that's how much love I got when I was a kid, man. Damn. Yeah, I had to b- chop down my half pipe when we moved out. My parents were like, you can't just leave that here. So I had to like break it down, which was heartbreaking. Why'd you guys move? Uh, we got robbed a bunch, and then two guys broke in and tied my parents up, gunpoint, and uh, stole everything. So eventually we are like, all right, this has been enough. Was that it? That was the kicker? That was the one, yeah. Wow, finally. dude, that's insane. Have uh, you talked about that before? A little bit in therapy. And, but uh, not out loud, huh? Not really. I, it was pretty pretty banana. I was at a Mardi Gras parade. I was 14 years old and uh, came back. There was cops everywhere. I thought my parents were dead. Wow. And my mom's crying in, in my dad's arms and crying. my brother's crying and the whole thing. Everyone's crying like a bitch. A bunch of pussies. Yeah, get over it. I know. And then I uh, finally got some, some answers. And then they were like, yeah, two guys broke in. They tied your parents up. Uh, they took the cards, the you know the bank cards, the cars, the jewelry, the money. They wow. took the TVs, everything. And uh, so as a tough guy, I was a 14-year-old. I was like, let's go. And I told my friends, like, let's go drive around and look for them. Mm-hmm. Hoping, obviously, we'd never find them because they just shoot us in the face. But uh, I remember I was crying the whole drive, you know, with my friends, but like pretending I wasn't. Ah, brutal. That's, that's hard, man. It was tough, yeah. And, and from that move... Um, you're, you guys went to a, a like a totally different area? Or totally it, different area. Yeah, you moved completely out of the town. Moved to a place called the Garden District, which is where the uh, the, the vandalism started. The Garden District Douchebags was our name. Oh, the GDBs. Yes, exactly. That's what we called ourselves. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was so, it was the suburbs. It wasn't, it was still in the city. I'm a real city kid, but I remember my friends lived in the suburbs and it was like paradise. Yeah. I mean, dro- dropping your bikes on the lawn, a door unlocked, the mom is cooking, uh, there was a trampoline in the back. It blew my mind. You know, we couldn't have a trampoline because then other kids would come in and like fuck with it. Right. They'd, they'd tear it or, yeah. or rip it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So when you so you say this was more of a suburbanite feel than the initial city vibe, is that what it was? Or it was still the city, but it was just safe. It was definitely the city. It was like uh right near my high school, so I could like walk to high school, I could take the streetcar, and uh Mardi Gras parades went down the street. It was still the city, but it was like it was like living in the West Village. Right. You know. Right. Well what do you, your parents were born and raised down there too, or no? My dad is born on a farm, like in this place called Marksville. Real poor. He shows me photos, and I'm like, he's wearing like overalls and next to an old Buick on a wooden porch with a rocking chair. I'm like, who the fuck are you, Mark right. Twain? <laughs> you know, there's some old guy with a pipe, and uh, it was black and white, crazy shit. And then my mom grew up in New Orleans. Okay. So my dad's like a Southern. I guarantee, like he's wearing a seersucker suit, mint julep. He's like, um, is that what he sounds like? He's like the Foghorn Leghorn. Oh yeah, I say, I say, son. Yeah. I say, son. <laughs> yeah, is yeah. that how your father has a Southern accent like that? A little bit, yeah, yeah. He's a little daintier, but yeah. Oh, uh, that's where you get it. I guess so. Yeah, he's a bit of a he's a little genteel. <laughs> a little genteel. Everybody down south is, proper. is a little more proper. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it comes off as effeminate for some reason. People have mistaken it for being effeminate, but it's just. Um, it's just like a way of, it's a cultural thing. It's a cultural, yeah, it's a cultural thing. thing. He loves furniture, he loves art, and yeah. he likes booze. Right, so he's gay. 
I guess. Yeah, yeah I was I just guess gonna he's say. A gay man. But I but I guess I share so many of those qualities on paper. Yeah. So I like art a lot. He was sophisticated. Yeah, he was well classy holier than now. He was right. classier than you for sure. Well, he's like a rapper who came from nothing and then now he's like, I'm going all in. I'm right. buying champagne, I'm mm-hmm. buying a beamer, I'm buying a mansion. Even if they take it, I'm still gonna buy it. Yes. So the so the tra- so the tra- the traumatic moments of having a gun at your parents' face never you never physically saw it. No, thank okay, God. Right. But you came home and the co- and the cops found them tied up. Yes. Holy shit, dude. Yes. Well, my dad, I think uh, they tied him up with neckties from my dad's closet, which is some kind of weird metaphor. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the man's got you. And uh, he, he got loose and eventually called the cops and he undid my parents. Wow. Or my brother and my mom. You guys ever get robbed again? Uh, not that I know of. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> I, I hope not. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. After that, that should be the last. That'd be it. See, I just move out of the entire state of Really? You oh, never yeah. got robbed like that? Like nothing? I've been robbed at like, give me your wallet, is I'll that, that's fuck something. you up. Yeah, but I mean, that's like street shit. That's like yeah. getting robbed on the train is like... Ah, that's nothing to sneeze at. I know, but like gun in your home tied up is a totally different that's beast, That's a different ballgame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like give me your wallet or, or run that, whatever yeah. that is, the run that shit. Run like, the, run, run, the run your shit. Yeah, like that I understand, I guess. It's like somebody, because that... I always had this weird idea that like if somebody was trying to stick me for something, it was like... I, they ha- they need it. <laughs> mm. Like I, obviously they're not doing it because they're yeah. But you're still getting a. It's still dangerous. You can yeah, still to, get knocked out to a degree. Out. To a degree. If it's less, if it's a gun, obviously the mo- is the most threatening. But if it's just like three dudes that are threatening you physically, it's like, well, I'm not gonna fight three dudes. Sure. I'll give you sixteen bucks. That's all I fucking got. Yeah, yeah. I got like, my, my. I just don't care. I got robbed three or mugged three times in New York. You've just, been mugged three times here? Yeah, the first year too. So where where were you? Uh, twice in Brooklyn and once in uh, Hell's Kitchen. It's kind of nice to get mugged though. It's kind of like a, it's like a uh, welcome R- to the city, like, right? You know, a little you, badge. Yeah, it's a uh, badge of honor, right? It's a rite of passage. Yeah, you go. Right now you're in the fraternity of New York. I guess. I mean, it's humiliating and a, and a real bitch on your schedule. You know, you're like, oh, I gotta get a new, gotta go to the bank, gotta get a new right. Metro card, all that shit. Right. I gotta get a key made. But, uh, Think yeah. about what their schedule is, though. I guess, yeah. but just because your life sucks, don't ruin mine. Oh, I'm not giving pity to the criminals. I just understand it. For it's, There is always a point when I go, yeah, I mean, that guy's life sucks forever. Fuck that guy. I'll be fine. Sure, sure. Like, no, it just, it gives me a moment of, like, anger, upset, you know, fuck my uh, my old bag, my old ball and chain, my old uh, my old Hagrid, my old anchor, the old... Battle axe? The old battle axe, the old hussy, the... The coos. The... the, 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 uh, the the life drain. The uh, what, what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She yeah. got she got robbed uh, when we first started seeing each other, and it was fucking miserable as shit. Some kid, um, like jump, kick, pushed her to what? the ground. Yeah, it was uh, nuts, dude. A lady. Yeah, oh, I know. That's what a piece crazy. of shit. So, um, he jumped like I mean, thrust his body under hers to like smash her to the ground, kind of like jumped. And she thought it was somebody running. She thought it was somebody like just going for a night yeah. jog or an evening jog because it was still, you know, it was, it was uh, about to be dusk and. Um, she fell, thankfully, on her laptop, which mm. and her laptop bag had some of her important shit in, like her cards oh, or whatever. Oh wow! And he was fighting her for her purse, and she started kicking him in the dick as hard as she Good could. Good for her. Yeah, and then realized, well, this guy could be a psychopath and could start punching me. Sure. And so she lets go of the purse, also knowing there's n- there's almost nothing in the purse but makeup and an expired card and some bullshit like that. So yeah. The guy got nothing, but she called me afterwards, like hysterical, and I remember. The feeling I felt when somebody, you know, st- stood me up for some money. Yeah, like, or, yeah. I mean, I mean, st- I mean, you know, not st- ran my ran my pocket, and I was like, "There's so such immediate anger, and you want death to come to these people, right. you know?" Yeah. And I sprinted there, and I left the stove on. Wow. And, yeah. It was. I, my mind was running in such a crazy. And the cops, you learn as you should in life, if anything, that you're like, oh, they don't. They, what could they do? What could they do? What mm-hmm. are they gonna do? They don't. They didn't really give a fuck. They were kind of like, right. Yeah, what they get, you know? And they just like, see you as money, and they need money. Yeah, and know? and so the cops don't really do much. Like, no, it's like no, what could no. they really? They and I think care. you learned at some point, like, unless it's murder. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cops aren't gonna f- really catch many people. That's true. I, I just can't believe you were cooking. Yeah, I was cooking. That's the part that blows yeah, my mind. Ramen noodles, baby. Oh, all right. Well, it there, was a there good. We it go. was a good time in my life. Well, I just got robbed in the West Village about a eh, about a year ago. And it brought all of it back. And, you know, it's very, my girl who I live with, she's from Cape Cod. So she's like, Oof. this is crazy. I've never right. even thought about this. And the, the cops came. And I live in the West Village, which is a nice neighborhood. And the cops couldn't have been nicer. When yeah. I was a kid, the cops were like a pain in the ass, like, keep it moving, you know, swinging the baton. <laughs> and these people were like, oh my God, we're so sorry. We're going we're gonna to catch this guy. I was like, 
Well, what's this? This is a new cop. Yeah, but they didn't catch him they at all. They caught him. Oh, they did? They got a fingerprint off of my uh, drawer, chest of drawers, and he took a lot. Of, I had a lot of cash in there. He took all of it. What are you doing keeping so much cash in your house? I thought it was cool having a drawer full of cash. What are you, Andrew Dice Clay? What the fuck are you I doing? Had a, I, had, I had some shrooms in there. I had some weed. Well, shrooms I get. Weed I get. But it was just it was like my cool guy How drawer. How much cash? Be honest. Be real. It was, uh, it was more, more than five grand, less than ten. Okay, we'll right say that. Up. I always say you should keep around... Well, okay. I should I say there should be a couple of grand at any given time in case of emergency. Yeah. But but ah, above five, you're getting t- now you're getting into I fuck know. you territory. You're, you, it's it, a bad move. It felt like he knew. It felt and that's of course you he know, knew. your brain starts going like, did I talk about this? And am I an idiot? As, as a fan, how did he get in? How did he know my part? Blah blah blah. I live in a big building with a, with a bunch of units, and he knew about my cash. It felt weird. I had fireworks in there. I had brass knuckles. I had a porno. You know, it was like an eighth grade drawer. Yeah, I was just gonna say, was this a time capsule from when you were in junior high? Yeah, and it was fun to just open it on a Saturday morning, hung over, and go, oh, that's pretty cool, Look and then at close all my it. Stuff. Yeah, I don't know what I was gonna to do with it or what but i had it i love seeing it what did your girl think she was uh pretty pretty fried about it you know but she got over it i, I handled all of it i did the cops and everything oh like a man yeah you're yeah. a tough you tough guy you hand i handle the <laughs> cops baby well, she's pretty lazy yeah she that's really do what anything. it is <laughs> yeah yeah i'd like her to help she's not a comic no, no. Thank no, God. No. She's well, a human. Yeah, where's where's the equality on that, ladies? Uh, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, no, no. Get out there, girls. Fight back. Yeah. That's what I say. Fight back. Take a swing. Pay a, pay a bill. Pay a bill. Pay a bill. Is that a gripe that you have? Do you do, do you pay for everything? You everything. For, yeah, you, do you pay for every dinner? Oh, yeah. Does she even try? I, every now and then, uh, she'll get like a taco. You know, and she's like, "Oh, I got this taco," and you're like, "Thanks." <laughs> where were you for the uh, the steak dinner? Yeah, I remember when I whenever I took you to Nobu. Where, yes. where were you on the? Yeah, yeah. Where were you on the, <laughs> give me a reach or a, or a thanks or a hug or a handy. Yeah, but that's an that's a part of equality that'll never even out, and we just like silently know it. You know, right? What? That, right. that it's something that we're like, I want women to have uh, equal treatment as of humans course. and equal pay and all these things. And then you go, but. Um, you know, they've never felt the black book. You know what I mean? Like that thing, <laughs> that's, such an, that's such an innocuous uh, item. To, whenever that thing gets dropped, whenever that book gets dropped, I'm always like, I wonder I wonder how instinctively, because you always know, they always drop it right in front of a dude. Of course. And yeah. I always want to push it over and go, how, how do you know? Did, right. Do it to her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Why is the pressure on me to always do the thing? Drop I, it in front of her. I had a girl tell me, I love when women are just honest with you, like friends. And they'll like, they're, one girl's like, you go on a date with a girl, just pay. It'll, it'll have you, help you get laid. There'll be a much better chance. Just sure. pay. And I'm sure. like, all right, but what about all that? She's like, I know. It's dumb. Just do it. And you're like, all right. And she said, if you ever look cheap in front of a girl, it'll the vag just dries up. I get it. I get it. But then I we have to it. be honest about the the, the, yes. the the idea of certain feminine points where you're exactly. like, That's hey, what man, I'm saying. feminism has a million holes in it. Let me right, let's be right. honest. For the, for the progression of women's rights, you're like, okay, sure. But also, I've talked about this on stage. You know, it's I like, I want to fill those holes. How come I don't? All of them. Every single one. Nose, Air ears, tight. mouth. Yeah, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how come, but how come, how come there's no, uh, you know, how come the, there's there's not as many women doing these bullshit labor jobs that you're yeah, like, okay, yeah, if you want to do it, then do it. Right, right. Yeah, then exactly. just do it then if you're so into these things. I know. So we know the truth. Uh, so I just think that it's it's foolish of an endeavor to pretend like we always want to be equals. That's right. a strange idea. It is a strange idea. And it's okay. We are different. Let's yeah. be different. That's fine. But let's not try to cherry pick. Right. That's what bugs me. Right. Tell me uh, Tell me when you left home, uh, did you did you have the goal of moving to New York to do comedy or was it kind of like a thing that you silently did? Was it like I made a big deal out of it and I told mom and dad that's literally what I wanted to do? Yeah, but my parents are so checked out that th- this kind of when it benefits you. They're like, all right, yeah, go, go, go nuts. Same, that's same for me, kind of. Which I think is good for a kid because right. you, you don't like get coddled or whatever, but it also kind of stings when you're like, this happened. They're like, yeah, whatever. And you're like, like are, are they fans of yours? No, nah, I don't know about fans. No, nah, I wouldn't like, say Your parents that. don't listen to your shit? No. Nah, if I'm on a Tonight Show, they'll be like, oh, we'll uh, DVR it or something, you know? Mm. But uh, I don't think they're like, they're not quoting like, that one Jew joke is killer, you know? Yeah, but it is. Oh, thanks. But you know it is, baby. I, I take pride in my Hebe <laughs> material. <laughs> you do? Yeah. <laughs> For a non-Jew, you write a lot of Jewish stuff. I find it all fascinating. Like, yeah. I'm just a honky with atheist. I got nothing behind me. I'm not like Italian, but I don't give a shit, you know? And... So I find it fascinating that people are like, I'm a black guy, I'm a Jew, I'm gay. Like, these groups really fascinate me. Why Why do you think that is? Because you're so not? I guess because I'm so not, and then I'm like, you guys give a shit about this, and uh, no one really cares that you're black. Like, don't make your group your identity. Like, uh. that, to me, that's weird, but it's very primal, and it's human nature, so I get it. So I, it's almost like chess pieces I get to play with, and I'm not in it. Right. So I feel like I'm like a fish out of anal. I get to watch. Do you get any do you get any criticism for it? 
Oh, sure, all the time. But like, does any of it hit home? Like, do you feel like somebody, somebody, people, a people, someone could say, oh, man, you're culturally appropriating the idea of these things because you get to dabble in it, but you don't have to take any kind of heat or responsibility for any of it. Nah, nah. That's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I don't care about that. I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm just commenting on it. I'm not a part of it. I'm not, com- I'm not, like, criticizing or right. critiquing. I'm just observing except for a lot of the hate speech stuff that you do now that that's stuff is true. that stuff's killer yeah that's thanks. your good stuff Let no i know what you mean going I, I, on tour. oh you are no <laughs> when do you guys start yeah i know what you mean i do the same thing um in the same realm of i push the buttons of a lot of racial jokes and i think like people get oddly nervous but you're like man what's strange is you're probably making more of an assumption than i'm giving that's you. exactly yeah, right you're, you're con- you you controlled all of the ideologies that you have to form your opinion about what I said, even though you did it, I didn't yep, do it. Yeah, it's all. It's like Bill Burr says. It's all cut with your bullshit. Like right. if I make a monkey joke and somebody goes, "That's racist," I'm like, "No, no, you are," because right. your brain heard monkey and went right. to this group. You know, I didn't, wasn't even thinking that. Right, and I was at the Bronx Zoo in my brain, <laughs> seeing an actual monkey. Like I actually saw a monkey. Yes, you yes. went to a place of negative nonsense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was eating chicken, but uh, still, oh, I get it. Right, that, that's a great exhibit, by the way. Oh yeah, yeah, I like that the fried chicken monkey exhibit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I grew up in a black neighborhood i went to public school it was this was all fodder and all fun and games and we were all equal and, and it was cool and then it's these we call them square honks these it's these whitey right. who come in and then they start they start criticizing you and you're like i'm with these guys we're right. good you live in a gated community on a tower you're the one you see them as this like accessory you know like let me get a photo with this black person right i just see them as people you see them as african americans or whatever right well to them well, and this happens a lot you know a lot of times very 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 far left progressive uh, ideology tends to be this um, i want to help the lesser than which almost in turn is yeah. very demin- diminutive Constant. and then and then they go uh, well, I want to help it, but I was like, not in my backyard. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. And also there's this thing of like, they can't take it. Don't say that. You're like, they've taken a lot. Yeah. They can handle it. Yeah. You're you're a douche. Right. You uh, Yeah, they don't need to be, people don't need to be dictated by what your idea of yes. their shit is. That's a bit of a supremacy vibe when you really break it down. Truly. You're like, I'll tell you what, what they can hear. Right. Like, what? Let them tell me. Have you, have you found, um, have you found that you're like, you're get, like, you tour a, a pretty good amount. Yeah. But do you do, do you play to a very specific audience or do you still broad enough where do you play colleges? Like, do you do yeah, that? Yeah, I'll do everything. You'll do all of it. I'll do, do bar shows. Cruise ships? Brooklyn. Well, I don't do cruise because I don't want to go out there. Fuck no. It's, I've said no to about a thousand of them. Yeah, I don't need that. But I don't like, want to die and get sick on the fucking ocean. I can't believe people go out on those things. It's just too cringy and claustrophobic. I just hate that I look out and I'm like, that's water and I'm just stuck. Right. Right on this fucking barge. Like, and, you have those moments of what if this goes wrong? Yeah. This is it for me. And I feel like I'm a detached from the world. I want to be in there. I want to be in the mix. That's why I like living here or going to L.A. or going to a, flying around the country. Would I, you ever live in L.A.? I would get a condo and, and do a visit, but I, I like it here. I feel like in New York, the treadmill's always on. In L.A., I'm there two days. I got my feet up. I'm hitting a J. I got a fat chick on my arm. It's like too comfortable, mm-hmm. and I just shut down because I'm a lazy guy deep down, and I need the treadmill to actually run. Right, you need to be. You need to have a little bit of anxiety. Yes, I yeah. need it, and that's all me. I'm a mess, so like I, I don't. I'm not a L.A. hater. Right. Like no. Well, guys. the irony is L.A. does fuel anxiety, but it's from a place of FOMO, right? It's a place mm. of like uh, I can't. I, why am I not on the other side of town doing that thing, and I can't get there? So it, it's not as accessible. Yeah. So that gives heavy amounts of anxious FOMO. Where here. You could have anxiety or FOMO, but it comes from a place of your own uh, your your own volition. You've made yes. it up all on your own, right? Yes. And also, I like being uh, ser- like really, really mobile. I like to just get out and just. I walked here, you know. I like to just get up and walk. I don't want to have the. All right, where's the car parked? Oh shit, that spot's no good. Now I'm turning. On, all right, I gotta go get the car. Now I got a ticket. Now it's in the lot. Like the, to me, the car and I love cars and I love driving, but. That L.A. car stuff really fucks with me. It kills you. It kills me. Well, it kills me, too. I mean, I, I love cars. I'm a car guy, so it's one of the things I love about L.A. is having a car is an, is an absolute you must. Yes. And I enjoy it. I get that some people are like, oh, no, pay a car payment, all this stuff. It's like, yeah, I know, but you spend so much money on dumb shit that I don't. That like, right. I, I hate when people make that argument to me that they go, oh, you must spend a lot, a lot of money on the car. It's like, 
Yeah, but you spend money on shit that I would never dream of spending. Of course, money, right? of course. You know, fucking girls with handbags. It's, uh, that, yeah, that's, that, yeah. that to me is just like, what a silly. So if that's silly and okay, then so is my stupid indulgence, you know? And at least yours is practical. You can get somewhere. Oh, and I fucking need it. You're in it every, you're in it every single day. day. It's like a bed. You want a good bed, you want a good car. Yeah, that is, that, is a, that is an actual fact. The first thing you learn when you move in with a significant other is that if you don't have a good, huge, comfortable bed, you're doomed. You're oh, fucked. yeah, you're fucked. Do you sleep in the same bed or different rooms? Same bed. Bed. Same room. Yeah, what is this? I love Lucy. Hey, man, I'm thinking about sleeping in the other room sometimes. Sometimes I do, actually. I've done the couch myself, yeah. I like it. I, 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 I like it because it creates this nice... I got to tell you, it makes you get excited again about fucking. Yeah, Because yeah. you get to, like, sneak in and fuck. Yes. Or it's like, yeah, it's kind of cool. Right. Love it's the way you fuck. used to fell. the way you used to feel when, uh, when you first started dating um, whomever. The idea of, like, going to meet up with them to have sex somewhere. Yes. So nice. So when, nice. When you live with someone, it's more of a... Um, Hey, scoot over! You lift right. up your leg. Right. You know, if there was a pill that kept that infatuation period alive, oh my oh god, man, could you imagine? Yeah, because it really just dwindles, and then you got to get a divorce, and life is so long now right. that you want to have it again, and now you're 68 with the same hag. Ah, <laughs> and it sucks for women too. You know, men are hairy and gross, and our balls are just—we got to flop them over off the bed, and it's uh, it's brutal. And men tend to not take care of themselves as they get older the most. I sure, feel like, I feel like it has to be a very devoted couple for both people to take care of. Them take care of one another you yeah, know what I mean like yeah. but I've said I've said to my old bag I've said that if she gets heavy and loses it and I mean not like she gains a couple pounds if she just gets just lazy and apathetic and that's gets, what it is then I'm out girls get mad about that like hey how dare you I thought you loved me you're I'm like out. no I loved you because you were a uh, fucking badass who kept it together and had a schedule and was ambitious, and right. now you've lost it. It's the same, like, what if I just stopped working? I'm out. It's the same thing. She yep. should be out for that. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, so I say that I hold myself accountable as well. I say, listen, if I stop losing, like, the uh, the the want to work out and the passion and the drive yeah. for, like, for all of these things, not just, like, keeping my body, but my mind in shape and, like, being active, if that goes away, I was like, leave the shit out of it. Leave me. Why would you? Yes. I, I, you see people that get older, and they do that thing where they play the game of staying together for the sake of staying together. Silliness, dude. Silly, but it's hard, man. It's hard. You no, get the see, life I, together. You're comfortable. Here's you have why a routine. It's hard. it's hard because society says you shouldn't. You should not float away from these things because that means you give up on stuff. You're mm. a quitter. We've embedded our society in a lot of ways of like feeling bad about being honest with ourselves. Sure. So we escape it a lot and we go, well, everything's fine, everything's fine. And a lot of things aren't fine. A lot of people have mental health issues. They can't admit it because there's a stigma. People right. don't want to get a divorce because there's a stigma. There is a stigma, but I think we're getting away from that. But I'm just talking about the practical part. Uh, like, Getting a new apartment, oh, moving, getting things in a box, getting right. a mover, all that shit is super annoying. And then you have to be together while you're moving. Like, Yuck. is that yours? Is that mine? How are we splitting that? And that's all brutal. Ugh. So I just start thinking about all that shit, which is a horrible way to live. No, yeah, you can't. You should do just that. think about the end goal. I think about all the minutia. Right. You and, get into the you get into the, the economics of it all. Yeah, I hate the economics of that kind of shit, but I like it. It's good with stand up. In here. We pour whiskey, whiskey. Hey man, life is short and everybody needs life insurance. You gotta have life insurance. I'm hoping that uh, my old lady isn't buying life insurance right now just to take me out because that would be her way of cashing in, dude. Um, but you need yourself something to help protect you and your loved ones. Um, and the best way to do that, to properly provide families with what they really need, you should get some help from Policy Genius. Policy Genius, it's an easy way to shop for life insurance uh, that's not going to, you know, get tied to your job or not going to get all roped into the politics of you and your loved one's relationship. You're not going to cause a fight. It's an easy way to break down what you need that works the best for you. Uh, so when you're looking at your workplace benefits this month, make sure to double check your life insurance options on there. And whatever it may be, go to policygenius.com to get quotes and apply in simply minutes. It's the way to, easiest way to like buy and compare life insurance policies. It's something that you need. It's stupid to not have. Um, and this makes the process so much easier. It basically cuts out the middleman nonsense of knowing where to go, who to pick. It is an algorithm of the best of the best for you to find out how to protect yourself and your loved ones. So do yourself a favor. Go to policygenius.com uh, to get quotes and you can apply in minutes. It is the easiest way to get yourself some insurance in this world. Ginger. I like gingers. Do you find that being in a relationship helps your stand-up or hurts it? I think it hurts it. Yeah, you do, huh? Yeah, yeah. You're going to get rid of her soon? You, <laughs> well, you get a lot of good bits, but uh, you, know, you get your relationship chunk, but it's like... 
I don't know. I, girls like spending time. Patrice said it so well. He said, uh, men want to be alone, but not by ourselves. Mm. And I want to be alone constantly. Like, I just yeah. want to watch TV by myself. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm a cunt. Do you say that to her? Sometimes, yeah. And she takes it personally, which I get. And I'm like, I just, it's not you. I just, that's why I like the road sometimes. I'm in a hotel. I got a pizza going and I'm, I'm watching uh, you porn or whatever. Right. And it's great. But you need that every now and then. And plus, I live in a shoebox with her. It's a tiny apartment, so that's just like, uh, oh, always man. on top of each other. Always. But let me tell you something. Even when you live in a house where you have plenty of space, you still somehow are on top of each Is other. Is that right? Yeah, you find a way to just be. There's not enough space in the biggest mansion in the world where you couldn't physically feel their presence somehow. Right. You know what I mean? Even that's why kings had those massive castles, but they were still like that bitch is in the fucking. <laughs> she's in the castle. And it's nothing uh, like women get mad about this. I'm sure there's some women women listening right now. Just no, really they get it. They get pad. it. They get it. But <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, you know, women. I feel like they need a lot of compliments and they need a lot of reassurance. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, you need that. Let me have this. I'll give you that. You give me this. Right. It's nothing personal, but it looks bad because it's literally me going, I need to be away from you. And so that's why it, it's ugly. Yeah, it does get a little bit ugly. Yeah, but I, I get it. So I, I you got to, what do you call it? Compromise. Yuck. I know, I know. You like to party. I like to party. You like to get your drink on. Yeah, yeah. You don't smoke weed, though. I don't know you're a weed guy. I'm too too anxious and yeah, yeah, insecure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the anxiety, all the bad goes up with weed. I go, this guy does hate me. I knew it. I can tamp it down a little bit when I'm sober or when I'm not high, but when I'm high. This guy hates me. They don't think I'm funny. Yeah. And then when you're drunk, you're like, everybody loves me. This guy thinks yes, I'm hilarious. Yes. Yeah, it's a great, it's it, a great place it to be. It numbs all the bad. What's your numbing? What's your favorite juice? I like whiskey. I like scotch. I like tequila. I like beer. I like all that shit. I'm, I'm a big liquor guy. And plus, as I get older, beer is getting a little heavier. Yeah. And I like that whiskey. I like that clean, on ice or neat scotch. I love a tequila with a lime right, mm-hmm. over, right over the rocks. Yeah, that's all you like. Yeah. You like it nice and clean and neat. You don't want you don't want uh, fillers, no, no mixers. No. Yeah, maybe a splash of uh, soda water or something. But yeah, right. Yeah, I'm, well, yeah. I'm a big I'm a big whiskey guy. We're not having any whiskey today because uh, we don't have it here. Mm. Uh, but I do. That's my vice. I don't think I'll ever give it up. I, somebody said last night uh, they were talking about someone they knew that was a red face. You know, a red face where they just a uh, drunk, they drink it all the time. Yeah. Uh, yes, 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 Native American. Um, <laughs> no, but they were saying, you know, these old, the Irishmen especially, we're red faces. When we oh, get older, right. if we drink a lot, are we, our red nose is insane. I mean, sure. It's, it, and, and, it come, and it comes underneath here real bad. But I was saying to them, they said, well, you drink every day. And I said, Pro- I probably have a drink every day. Is that right? Uh, yeah. I, I, I would say, well, there's times that I just don't have one. Yeah. But um, if I have a long work day, if I'm shooting or if I'm on the road or whatever, yeah, at the end of the day, usually I'll probably have a drink. But there are many a days when I have just a drink. Uh-huh. Where I, I'm not having. I'm that's not, gonna, not bad. Yeah, no, I'm not going to. That's almost healthy. If you can have one, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, one probably means two because it's probably a double. But yes, it is. Right. It's a one sitting drink. That's yeah. fine. Well, dude, I, and I used to think, God, I wonder if I have a problem. And then I talked to my friends because so many of our friends are sober now, right? Like so many of my oh, comedic yeah. friends are sober. Oh, yeah. We're hanging in. Well, and you talk to them and you're like, I guess I'm fine because it just makes me feel like their stories are so awful that when, when they're like, yeah, you know, I just. You know, Swartzen was just on the podcast, and Nick was saying hey, he'd have sixteen drinks a night. That's crazy. And I was like, "Oh man, why not fucking that?" That's definitely the. I don't know how you would notice it when you're inside of it, but from the outside perspective, it's so very obvious. So when I can yeah. sit back and go, I don't think I ever do that. No, no, that's too much. And I like I'm getting so good at drinking, you know, just from doing it since I was 13 or 14 that you know, like, oh, I got a good buzz on. If I mm-hmm. drink any more, I'll be crazy hungover and I'll be over the line and or whatever. Just, I'm good right here. Yeah, I've had a drink with you, and you're not a guy. You're actually really good about having just enough. You're like a guy who knows mm. how to have just enough. Now, not to say that like I want to go. Don't yeah, trust you me. I want to pu- push the line, yeah. but I know. Just like, all right, I'm, I got a rental car. Uh, if I keep going, I'll bang this uh, dude or yeah. whatever. So yeah. I got in the rental car, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> which hurts charges for now. Oh, that's yeah, right. you can't just fuck a dude in the rental car anymore. It used to be a great. They used to have a cleanup policy. Yeah, well, it's hard to get jizz out of fabric. It is. Know? Well, dude, that's I, I get leather seats every you gotta time. Go yeah, leather. upgrade, upgrade, and baby. You heat it, and then they really yo the make boiling a pot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a petri dish. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that do you find that on the road? You're uh, do you find that on the road? You are. Um, you're drinking more, or do you drink more when you're in New York? Oh, for sure on the road. Yeah. Oh yeah, I love drinking on the road. I'm a big, big. I like to get after it. Like I'm, I'm still that guy. I'm 36, but I'll do the. Uh, oh, there's a house party. You're going the host. Oh, like, you will. The host of uh, the show is like you know 19 or whatever the fuck. You're nuts. Some hip black guy, and he's like, oh, I'm going to some party at the dog. I'm like, let's go. 
So I'm the old guy. I've heard stories about you. Yeah. You go out with people afterwards. Well, yeah, you'll also go do mics and stuff and you'll do yes. other shows. Yes. Are you out of your fucking head? Well, A, you get out of the hotel, you yeah. know, you're not all sad and gay. And then you go to this party, you see something you would never seen. You t- you're absorbing constantly. Sure. You know? And I think it's good for, good for your life because I have a big fear of death. So I'm like, if I can get as many memories and as many little quirky, weird things in as possible, I'm in. I agree with that. What, why do you have a fear about death? What's what's looming? I just know it's coming, and I know that... Uh, not anytime soon. Well, not anytime soon, but like, look, I, I const- I'm constantly looking back, which I'm sure is unhealthy, but I'm like, oh yeah, remember that? Remember that? And then I'm like, wait, now I've forgotten that. What happened that night? Oh, shit. So I just want to make more and, and make as many while I'm here. So it's about memories for you. Yeah, memories are all we have. Yeah, well, that's not all we have. That's true. Present is a lot more important, I feel like, than the past. Yeah, I guess, but what is the present? People say that. I'm like, present's gone. No, you're in it right now. This is it. This is it? Are you enjoying yourself on the podcast? I'm having a great time. All right, well, then this is it. But eventually, this will be over. Doesn't matter. Then you're on to the next thing. But now it's a memory. But it can be. And not only is it a memory, it's documented. That's right. why I love this. this well, is, this, this is, is important. A capsule. Yeah, this is important. Yes, this gives you a piece of of uh, this gives you a piece of who you really are that gets to sit on a thing for the rest of time. I love that. Yeah, and it's, it's how you get canceled. That's well, exactly. Well, you're going to get canceled. Oh, no doubt. I want you to look it. right in that camera and say, "I'm ready to get canceled." <laughs> <laughs> Me and Shane Gillis are writing something. Yeah. What? Yeah. What is no, it? What I'm is it? What kidding. is it? It's called Chinatown, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 How's the mood around that in this town? It's called a chink in the arm. There it no, is. Um, it's a war tour. It's a war film. You know, it's weird because uh, I feel like it's kind of coming back around, but like there's a weird vibe now. I don't. And L.A. doesn't seem to have this, mm. or I didn't see it or feel it. But like a couple of guys from like the other side came to a comedy club, and you could feel when they walked in, it was like awkward, and you're like. Are you guys comics? Why am I nervous around you? What do you mean the other side? Be more clear. Like the the, the side that wants to cancel you. Ah. Uh, you know, and you're like, we're all telling zingers. Yeah. What is your big agenda on ruining people's lives? And they, in their minds, they're so gung-ho on like, we're saving the world here. This right. guy said, gook, we got to ruin his life. You're like, I'm not a bad person. I love Asians. It's a word. I'm, I'm a I'm a clown. Right. What are you crazy? Right. This is your life. Right. This is you're bullshit. sick. Right. This is your illness. You think <laughs> I'm a weirdo? You have this thing where you want to ruin someone's life. You got problems. Right. And uh, I like also where you think rappers are going around going, hey, hey, you talk about killing that guy. That that's kind of mean. Like <laughs> you're an artist. I'm an artist. Let let's be artists. Stop right. critiquing. Go help somebody. Go help the world if you're such a savior. Well, that's why the world of rap is so wonderful because. Uh, Black culture uh, in rap dictates how much bullshit they've lived through their whole lives. Right. And 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 what person could question the idea of their struggle? So they're like, you don't fucking know. Yeah. What I, I'm going to say whatever the fuck I want because it's, it's my experience. It doesn't mean yes. I have like ill will towards things. Yes. This is just the way I feel about the world. Yeah, right? I got bullets over my head. My dad's on crack. Or if I know my dad, I live in the fucking projects. Leave me alone. Right. You're going to tell me out. what word I can say? Right. Get the fuck out of here, right. honky. But that's why we're subject to it because we're supposed to be these... Um, I think the biggest problem is when people have this idea that we're like the, the bastions of truth. Yes. Of society. No, we're fucking idiots. We're, we're idiots, idiots to get paid money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so stupid. I got a lampshade on my head. I'm jerking off into a, a coffee can. What are you doing? Who's in the room? Phyllis Diller? Who else? <laughs> oh, the door's locked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you should. I, I, it's not that way in LA. To be fair, no, I, I, it's, uh, a, it's a breath of fresh air. We don't give a fuck at all. There is no. But I think the reason that we don't give a fuck is because the pressure that New York had on comedy for so long, which was a great pressure, which was extremely talented, hardworking, all nighters, joke writers that are out all night doing sure, club after club after club. And yeah, whatnot. those guys set like a precedent that was. Um, unreachable for us. Yeah. And our city got divided almost in a way of like you either were doing clubs or you were doing all shows. Mm. And then there came this weird wave of everyone going, well, we could just do all of it. We could just do both. And it's just raw content and it's, it it doesn't matter, and right. for some reason these worlds mesh. You know, a lot of guys from the left from the left world are coming into this other world, and yeah. it, like, and I mean, I mean, like the East Side guys, or like it became this um like homogenized group of just funny comedians. Yeah. So like shitty comics kind of got like um shooken out of the gold pen. You know, oh it's great, like, yeah. It's just kind of weird how I mean, not to say it doesn't exist, but for some reason we birthed this idea that um 
it, it just doesn't matter, and no one really cares in LA. Yeah, we're all gonna die one day. Yeah, you know, and I think like, I think everyone needs to catch up to the idea that like canceling someone or, you know, like they awarded that girl and good for her for talking shit about Harvey Weinstein when he was at the show. Yeah, like good for her yeah. for having fun and being funny. And but Harvey also they sucks and Cosby yeah, sucks. They like, fucking suck. It's obvious who we need to get rid of. You know? Yeah, it's pretty clear. Yeah, but I think that like they awarded her in a way that was like um, how brave. It's like. <laughs> Sure, I yeah. You're just calling out a, a fucking uh, like a tyrannical rapist. I mean, I don't. Right. Is that a hard thing to do? Right. You know, like right. I don't know. Like supporting him would have been real. I'd be like, that's brave. Oh yeah, that's ballsy. If she yeah. was, if she was like, you know, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind. Didn't mind what he like that. Right, right. Insane, but also like, wow, I would have been. But brave to me gets stepped on on comedy because they're like, they're brave for doing non. Not in her case. I mean, in the parallel world of, they're brave for doing not comedy. You see this a lot where they're like. Comedy doesn't have to be funny. That's like an, you know, an article. Yeah, yeah, I hate so, that. In what, in what realm of comedy doesn't have to be funny? Yeah, brave sucks. It's rarely brave. You know, talking about how rape is cool is very brave. It is. It's Yeah. And people go, how could you say it? I'm like, I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it's brave. Yeah, I'm not saying it's- you get ruined. Yeah, right. I'm not saying it's a great- It's awesome. Yeah. I'm saying it's very brave. Yeah. It's yeah, you're dancing on a line. Brave. Yeah. Yeah, but we, we've ruined that word. And uh, yeah, comedy it turned into some kind of like agreeance off at some point. And I feel like we're getting out of that. No, we will. Yeah, this, the swing is happening, especially because people, when you tour, they tell you how bad they just want to talk shit and have a good time. Right. They don't right. go. Nobody goes to a club for a fucking political lesson. Yes. Nobody goes to like feel correct about the world. They go there to escape the bullshit that they feel about their workplace every day and the things that they're they're not supposed to say and do. And there you go to go. Oh fuck it. We can just. I can let it burn. And this guy's right. gonna help me let it burn. Right. More the gasoline to be like. Let's fucking do it. Light it up. You exactly. know. Exactly. I mean, it's like you go to the Midwest and you talk to some guys on stage talking about like how we need to help these people and they're like, dude, I work in a mill. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hit my wife. <laughs> almost a minute ago like just please give me a, a yuck em up and you keep making this not funny I'm gonna hit her again yeah. right in front of you that's what's gonna happen I'm <laughs> exactly. on my 15th butt, butt heavy so yes you're to blame you are to blame pal yeah you, have you found um, have you found the road to be uh, more satisfying now that you're because you're now you're selling good tickets you're on the road oh, more like yeah. has it gotten better for oh, you oh dude I mean I'm a paper ticket guy a paper the room guy right and if you, if you don't know what that means that means like people don't buy tickets so they have to just give out free tickets mm. to random fat weirdos who uh, have a limp and a rascal and they're always fat with a limp yeah always yeah, no. <laughs> and then they're just eating chicken wings like you're bothering them they're like what are you doing here who are you I'm trying to eat Right. And you're like, oh, I'm the comic. I'm the reason this place exists, kind of, you know? And uh, I'm just trying to win them over, and that was my whole existence. And it's that's why you have to get drunk. You're like, after that, I need a goddamn cocktail. Sure. But uh, now it's like comedy fans, and they actually give a shit. And they do that whole thing like, thanks for coming. And you're like, what? This is my this is my favorite thing to do. Right. Thank you for coming. Right. That's good. That's the good balance. Yeah. Well, we need to find that, that happy medium of fanship and... Uh, and, and and comic support where we're like, yeah, man, we just want to do it for people that really want to see it. And I hope that yeah. more people just keep doing that thing where they're like, I feel like I want to keep supporting this thing because they find how funny. Com- I, I love when people come to me they're like, this is my first comedy show. I'm like, wow, I've I never know. been to a comedy show. Isn't it's wonderful. Crazy? Well, it's great because you're like, thank fucking God. And also, I get it. If I didn't do comedy, I don't know how many shows I would go to. No, of course not. You There's know? so much bad comedy. We've all seen bad comedy. So and you much. go like, how would anyone come to this? Right. Like, I would never go to a show again. You just lost a ton of money, you lost a ton of night, you know, your whole night's gone. And you'd be like, stand up sucks. Right. And it's like going to a poetry slam. You're like, what am I doing here? Yeah. You know, but we want people to come out. We want people to come back. But you are a good poet nonetheless. Oh, yeah. Want to do one of your poems for everybody? Sure, yeah, sure. Please. Uh, the fox jumped over the moon because he saw a scary. C- All right. Well, I think we're good here. <laughs> I can't do any poems. What is it? Swoon? Spoon? Yeah. <laughs> Spoon. Spoon. Oh, yeah. No, good. Spoon, man. God, you are a good poet. That is, Thank I, you. And, and I don't mean to like put you on the spot because I, um, I know that you are an acclaimed uh, <laughs> wordsmith, so I don't want to make you feel like, you know, I just dug you out of a hole there, but sure, me I did. and Kerouac. You really are. Yeah, you're is the modern. Poet? Yeah, well, a writer. Robert, Robert Frost. Sure, Something. Diverged in the Woods, and I took the one less traveled. That poem's r- ridiculous. You know that, right? I took the road less traveled. You yeah. Know? You know why that's so annoying? Why? What he's saying is, truthfully, at the end of it is, I could have taken the one that was traveled uh, more um, and got to the exact same place. I just I took the harder path. Ooh. So in some words, he's really saying it was a little foolish. Right. I should have yeah. done the podcast. Right. You know? <laughs> why of, did I? I did the late night. Why did I do that? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. why? Why did I go on... Carson Daly when I could have just <laughs> how many late nights have you done 12 I think wow and yeah. all of them bad some really no, bad no they're some all phenomenal good. Nah, I, my last one was rough and it, I, 
I lost sleep over it. I'm like punching walls in a hotel room in Sacramento like, fuck, why yeah. did I pick that joke? Why did I do that? You know. Why am I in Sacramento? Yeah. No, I, I feel, I know what you mean uh, when you feel like you do a set that you're bummed about a oh. little bit. Or, yeah, I get it, but you're, I, I'm not placating. I would, I would not mention it, but I truly think I, I haven't seen you have a bad, bad set on television. I, hey, I appreciate. I mean it. that. I yeah. appreciate. I did one set. I did my half hour comedy central special. Now whatever that was bad. That was bad because I had, uh, I got an, a, a virus called H. Pylori, and I was like, I got to change the date. They're like, we can't change the date, so I had to do it. If you look on the internet, I'm puffy. I'm th- my face is this big. I'm What's sweating. H. Pylori? It's a virus you get from eating feces, and I ate some fat chick's ass in Wisconsin. And uh, I guess I got some fecal matter in me and uh, totally shut me down. Wow. I was like, my tongue was sheet white. I was spitting up like hocks of whatever. My I was shitting water. I, I had a stomach ache. I mean, I was weak. It really got me. Those cheese head chicks. I know. Is that because she didn't wipe enough? Huh? I assume. I mean, I think even when I went back there, she was like, you're fucking crazy. Are you? <laughs> you're taking your life in your hands here. Are you a big ass eater? Uh, you know, it was it was like six years ago when it was like just it was oh when hot. it just started right. Yeah. It was a trend. Yeah, it was a trend, and I wanted yeah. to show like, hey, I'm I'm down. <laughs> I'm pro women. You know, I'll eat your ass. You had those true religion jeans on, and you were all with the hip trends. You had affliction shirt, and you're like, I'm eating that ass, pal. You got that whatever, right. Whatever comes around, I'm I'm going for it. Yeah. So uh, you learn your lesson now. I learned my lesson. I came up. It looked like I had a like a candy apple. I was covered Ooh, in chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, boy, I learned my lesson. Now I only eat. Kids' asses. Right. Yeah, it's got to be clean. I get a baby wipe in there. And... Well, because they've just been cleaned. Right. Right. Exactly. How do you, after tub time, is that what it is? <laughs> tub time. Right after tub exactly. time, right before nap hour. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's when you do it. And then I lick it, and then I put baby powder on it. I was talking about this with somebody. I, we moved to a new neighborhood, and, and, and immediately the old hag gets on... Um, uh, Megan's Law. You know, to find out there's perverts around you. Do you know what that is? Oh no. Megan's Law is a, is a website that that locates how many people have sexual hi- uh, criminal histories uh, with children. Uh, yeah, I've heard of this. Yeah. It, well, I'm mm, sure. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah, registered. Yeah. Trying to find out where the boys are. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but it was insane how many pervs are with underage kids. It, it's really. It would blow your fucking mind, dude. Wow. It, uh, the map looks like chicken pox. I mean, every it's everywhere. They're is they're that ev- right? oh yeah they're everywhere. Well, because the crimes can range, right? Like the crimes can be something like um sending an inappropriate photo like a guy could just oh, always send photos you know what I mean but yeah. they all got caught and they all got busted which means there's way more people that do it that don't get caught wow yeah. aren't you glad I'm so glad I'm not into kids it is weird to We're think lucky. how many people are yeah we did yeah. make it out the other side we say that like oh my kid was uh, thank god he's born with 10 fingers and 10 toes thank god I didn't get the attracted to kids genes yeah that's the bad one. Oh, I'd rather have 4 fingers <laughs> and not want to fuck a kid than 10 and want to fuck I'm a hoping playground. my kid comes out with 2 or 3 toes and 1 eye because I don't want anybody to want to fuck him oh good point Keep them ugly, Good baby. Point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're well. going the wrong way with genetic research. We're trying to make kids look better. We should make them look way worse. Way worse. Well, I think the fat kid trend has helped with less fucking. I agree. I've yeah. said that before. I think that like nobody runs as much. Right. So pedos are not inclined. They're not inclined. But you can catch a, a real tubby, chunky kid quicker. I know, but their their butt cheeks are hard to get open. Also, the kids like the candy. <laughs> You know, that's king size. A, king size. You you can just dangle that like a carrot on a yeah. mule, and he'll jump right in that <laughs> sliding van door. That's so. This is yeah. This is and this is the um. This is the part of the podcast that uh we really love. Yeah, yeah. This is the stuff that we really mean. It's always funny to think when we get into these rhythms of inappropriate jokes that make us laugh. That there is one person that is there. Ninety nine percent of fans are always like having a good time. Yeah. There's one guy. He's sitting in his car and he's like, no. Yep. No way. That's true. And you know what? That guy loves fucking kids. That's the <laughs> You know who you are. Yeah. You're on that list, yeah. baby. Megan's log. That's right. His name's Fal- Your name's Falcon. Yes. He's got one of those annoying names. He's a, he's a driver. He's, his parents named him something because he could never amount to shit because they don't mean <laughs> shit. You heard me, Falcon. You know who the fuck you are. And he became a Cub Scout leader just so he could tell kids what to do and get in that sleeping That's bag. Exactly right, Falcon? right, dude. That's like my neighbor went to Pray Away the Gay Camp. You know what that is? No. Yeah, uh, they have these religious camps where what? yeah, those are real. Oh my god, yeah, dude, very much so. They try to reform you, uh, and it was in South Carolina, North Carolina, one of the Carolinas, and um, his parents sent him away because they thought he was effeminate. So they said you're going to get that 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 homosexual out of you. God wants it out of you. Whoa. So you go to these gay camps. What do you think is going on at the gay camps? Fucking, fucking. They're all kids that are repressed from from. 
being gay. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he loved. He was like the greatest thing in the. I, he goes, I wanted to keep going back. Right. My parents wouldn't send me because I think they caught wind of what was going on somehow. But he's like the counselors were just hot eighteen year olds. Oh my god. You're right. That's so he's just, yeah. Oh my god. He was in, he was in fuck heaven. He's like you know how many dudes were, were were tugging each other off in the bunk beds. I mean it was just like oh. you would hear guys sneak up and just quietly tug each other off. Good for that. And you know what? I bet there weren't any fat kids at that camp. No those shit. Gays keep they it in keep line. It in shape. Yeah, they got eight packs. There is a group of gay men though. Like when I lived in West Hollywood, there are always a subcategory of gay men who are all rotund, who are oh, all really? round. Is yes. That the bear? Yeah, but the bear is also big and hairy and muscly. A lot of times muscle, but there is a gay, there's like a rotund uh-huh. gay. There's like a very round, there's like a bowling ball gay. Right, Buddha gay. Buddha gay, yeah. Mm. Buddha gay, Buddha jij, Buddha gay, Buddha jij. <laughs> same guy, same platform. Yeah, yeah he, there is a very rotund, my neighbor was a rotund gay. Mm. Sweet, awesome. Because the gays are very, very, um, what do you call it? Like Fun. Prejudice, well, yeah, the yeah. prejudice against the, uh, the unattractive. Yes. It's like, look at the man, how shallow we are, and then you can, you're allowed to do it because it's not like hurting a woman's feelings, I guess. So you yeah. can just be horrifically offensive, like, you're too fat for me. Well, because there's this idea that it's like, if I'm not going to, I don't want to fuck you, so I can be mean to you. Right. right. So the woman is okay with it when a gay guy says something snarky to them because it's like, Isn't that well, he's not trying to fuck me. Yes. Well, I can, I say that to my girlfriends. You know, like I talk shit to my girlfriends all the time because they know I'm not trying to, I'm not going to fuck Right, them. right. So it's kind of like that's the same line that they're allowed to take all the time. It is amazing that how bad it bothers women when guys don't want to fuck them. Oh my God, it yeah. It really fucks with their, their being. Like if I want to fuck you, it fucks with you because I'm like creepy and whatever. And if I don't want to fuck you, that also pisses you off. Right. It's a fascinating <laughs> little line there with the ladies. M- meanwhile, uh, we want the, the anti- we want the antithesis. I we want to we want everything to want to fuck us. Everything. We're, I want the tub of lard to be right. all over me and the anorexia. Right. Let's go, man. Yeah. Dis- diseases of all kind, eating disorders of all kind, all welcome. Bring it. Regular Eat. healthy mental people I don't want. You want destroyed, distraught. I guess so, because they're willing to do it. It's it's also crazy crazy like we talk about the, the equality thing if a gal fucks the student the teacher there's a lot of teacher fucking student oh, yeah. thing and that doesn't really it kind of goes like it's like a silly ah what are you gonna do right you know it's like hey where are we with this shit when the you guy know? does it oof. You know, the lolita express i'm not a, i'm not a, a fan or whatever i don't think it's right but ah <laughs> you know well, let's get mad at these ladies then huh ladies dude i had this real discussion on the plane the other day about uh the idea that we can have children this kid i saw this news story where the kid this kid had a kid at 13 because he fucked his nanny who was what? 22 wow yeah, he was 22 and i mean she was 22 he was 13 and i said you know what's crazy about that your body your biology creates the idea the, the ability to make sperm and hers to receive an egg at a very young age mm-hmm. as well science is telling us to have kids oh, at a young age that is interesting right? i'm not saying that it's uh the 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 societal right thing to do socially because you're raising a kid young is probably quite difficult on a, for a million different reasons. Yeah. But also, that's probably the initial intention of science was to have kids young so your bodies bounce back. Right. You have a full life ahead of you. Wow, that's We should all be having kids at probably 12 or 13, truthfully. Yeah. According and, to science. And then, oh, this is when this is when I get really canceled. But I'm just talking here. Well, I'm not. That's I'm just saying that science is doing this I'm thing. I, it's weird. But I got a point is... A kid can now decide his gender when he's like four. Well, yeah. But you can't fuck it. So you're like, so the kid can't decide to get fucked, but he can't decide to be a different gender? Yeah, that's interesting. Is that weird? I'm not, I'm not, I got no dog in this jizz. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, what's going on here? I don't know who, I don't know what comic said it, and I wish, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not, this is not me saying this, this is not my joke or quote, but somebody said, you won't let your kid tie his own shoes, but you'll let him pick his gender. It's mm, very weird. It's, it's like very strange. It's a strange, it's like, you won't let him pick their outfit or cross the street by themselves. Right, right. But, but a more, a more life, ch- like, you know, I think... If your kid says, um, like, I'm not going to get deep with a personal thing, but I, we have a family member who is young and, and and maybe feels not in their own skin, right? Yeah, and that's the idea, normal. And the idea is be whatever you want to be for the time in terms of what you want to wear and what you want to like yes. feel like. That's all fine. By the time you're an adult and you're 18, you can make conscious lifelong decisions. Then, then we'll have a talk about your future there as you changing. But the idea to impose that on a youth is very odd. I mean, dude, I don't have tattoos to this very day because I can't commit to shit. What makes you think? And this was, and this is me. I'm thirty. I'm a thirty-six year old man. I still can't do it. Yeah, yeah. So you're telling me you have that kind of conscious ability as a youth to of go course. fuck that, dude. And it's chop his, off my dick. Right. No. Right. I know. I wanted a swastika tattoo, and I was like eight. Get it know? now, though. Maybe I should get it now. Ironically, yeah. right. But it's true, and it just. And this is all for the, we're not anti-trans. We just I like kids. Well, that sounds bad. No. But I just want kids to be safe and happy. Right. You know, I'm I, I'm worried about their well-being. That would actually be. Some be more supportive of the community than not saying that I want this community to be 
um, healthy and received in a way that's uh, uh, not detrimental toward the personal health of someone. Because I, t- I got to tell you, when it happens to a kid, you read all these things. You can go online and read them now. Kids that want reverse surgery oh, that, that did it. Is and, that right? Yeah, and there's a lot of complications with what happens when you do it when you're young because you're developing, dude. Your your fucking organs aren't done. Yes. So like, you and can't. Your brain you're, is not. You're not done. gonna eat the cake in the middle of it. It's like just let fucking finish the cake. Then we'll put frosting on it. How about that? I hear you, and I, I wonder if we're gonna look at this like in 50 years if the world is still around. No way. But I wonder if we'll look at all this, like the gay camp, you know, the way we look at gay camp now, it's like, what the fuck are we thinking? Right. You know? Yeah, well, maybe, maybe. I think, I think, I think, um, logistical, uh, 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 smart people know the truth is that you should probably not do that to somebody young and figure it out when you're older, when you're an adult. I mean, my fucking... Yeah, I remember my parents had got so mad at me when they found out that I smoked and drank when I was sure. 15 because they were like, just you're, 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 you're going to get there. Right. Just to, just wait a little bit. Wait a little bit. Yeah, have, go kick a ball. Have right, fun. You're right. It was less about the idea that I'm, they're mad that you're doing the, uh, a no-no thing yeah. and more that they're like, when you become an adult and you can make those decisions, you can make all these mistakes. Trust me, you're going to make a fuckload of mistakes. Yeah, oh, yeah. And you're going to make a lot of mistakes that, or you're going to make a lot of decisions that alter your life for the better, right? So mm. once you get there... Uh, figure it out then you know don't yeah. there's no need to slow don't down. rush yes yeah. slow down that's your next album is called slow down yes yes go slow go pull slow, it in pull, pull it, it out. out slow yeah. it down but dude. also i will say i love when people have kids because they just kind of go this is important this is not get out of my fucking way like yeah. all these people who are just so wound up about every little thing we got to change this and that da, da, build that wall you have a kid you go ah, i got to take care of my kid i got to make some money and i got to get laid yeah you know you just Focused. Yeah. yeah, well, because it becomes more, there's things so heavy on your plate. Right. You can't, you don't just get to kind of like f- f- freelance through life anymore. You got to actually focus. Yeah. Do you want to have a kid? I think I, as I get older, I kind of do. Because mm. I see all these comics who are like 40, late 40s having kids, and I'm like, oh, maybe I could do that. Because yeah. I like the little guy with the noogie, and I tuck <laughs> him in, and he's, you know, weird and queer and cute, you know, and I get to feed him jizz or whatever. Why would you? That doesn't make sense. Well, it's, it's Food not easy to chew. Oh, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's just nice. But I, I don't want the baby. The baby part, it bums me out. But I like the, the little kiddo around, you know? And yeah. You kick him in the butt and he build a tree house and push him out of it. You don't, have to, you don't have to do anything. You know you don't have to carry a baby. You don't have to do much, actually. I know. It's probably the easiest part. Yeah. yeah, we're very lucky. Well, not lucky. Sense. We pay for it. That's true. Quite That's literally. True. We pay for it quite literally. I always say biology, the biggest misogynist. Yeah, it is, you know, right? The menstruation, the pregnancy, I know, the, but that's, the aging. But that's why we dig ditches and we're garbage people. I guess, and then that's okay. Now that's we a found a balance. balance. Yeah, we found a big balance. Here, here, we're saving the world. What's here. your what's your big, what's your ultimate um is a it's such a bold, stupid question. What's your big what's your what would be the end game goal for you if you were like, you know what I want my career to turn out to be? Whether it's uh, whether it's parallel to someone that exists, like a Carson type of thing, or whether it's like a a comic that you like, what would be your end game goal in comedy? Man, that's a good question. I think I'd like uh, I like what Jeselnik's doing. I like that he's got his act. He's a cool dude, and he does his own shit. People come out to see him, mm-hmm. and they don't get mad at him because they know he's joking. And then he has like his show on the side where he does what he wants, like with other comics and fucks around, right. like whatever that show is called. What you mean? His new show? Yeah, uh, it's called uh, Good Talk. Oh no, that's his podcast. His his show is called. Um, uh, 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 what is that called? Oh my god! Call I, in I just if you talk- know. Uh, we'll take the first caller right now. Uh, Marjorie, you're in Queens. Um, I'll tell you. I think he's gay. Oh uh, no! Yeah, well um, we know that, Marjorie. <laughs> Thanks for calling in. No, but he he's got he's like a funny, hilarious guy, and he's like completely himself. He's not acting in anything, yeah. you know. Like his show is just him, which I like. I can't act, right? So I'd want something kind of like that. I mean, I, I, no offense, uh, he's a friend. I think you need bigger goals. I mean, I think you can achieve that quite easily. I think that's oh, something that really? you're on the path Shit. for. Oh yeah, man, that's, that shows my self esteem. Yeah, no, I think there's I think that you're like literally two turnstiles away from that. That's not ah, a far reach. Well, I always, but in a good this. way. I think you're fuck. I think you're a talented dude who's going to get there without a doubt. I think you should have huge goals because you. Um, Cause you're gonna go somewhere someday, kid. What do you want? What do you go? What's your um? Goal? Honestly, uh, uh, I really just w- I, I, at the end of the day, I really want to do like a Sandler esque thing. Like Whoa, I want to, I want to, I want to create a world of um. Well, I don't want to be him. I want to be my own version. I want to create a world where I can employ friends and do television and film and podcasts and thing. I just I want to I want to circulate friendship groups to make money together. I, I want to get that. fucking rich with my friends. That's fucking great. Yeah, I want to get mean, fucking rich with my friends like he did and I'm jealous of him but I'm also You could make a better movie. I will. Yeah, yeah we yeah, don't no. need uh, Santino doing click. Are you sure? 
Yeah, come on. Well, how about if I do like uh, Fifty First Dates? That was a good movie. He did some good films. That was fine. See, he did some good movies. Yeah. People, I think people shit on people shit on his stuff because he he has catered more to the audience that uh, is. Uh, what's selling him you know what I mean the people right. that are selling him is that's who's receiving him so it's like it's a very CBS audience so to speak or like a family friendly and sure Jack and Jill you gotta have it I guess you gotta have it it's like I it's, you gotta have it it's like McDonald's or but did pizza. you watch his special I enjoyed it yeah so to, to me uh, genuinely I was not to say not not to say I was thought I was gonna hate it but like I was had low expectations because I thought well he hasn't understand him a long time like maybe this isn't his thing anymore I gotta tell you I thought it was one of the best specials I've ever seen it was so funny really? and loose and stupid. And yeah, it, it was just because it was just didn't matter. I just feel like it was like, how nice to have a breath of like, uh, he doesn't really, it's, he doesn't care that, that you but here's the are searching for something. Don't you worry because you're a pretty uh, straight up, honest, you know, kind of yeah. redhead. You're, yeah. you're, you tell it like it is and yeah, he doesn't baby. really do that. No, I know. That's true. And but that's th- part of why I think he's so big. Because he keeps it a little bit closeted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah, knows but how to there's, play the game. There's room for all of us. You think? Uh, I don't know if that's Joe Rogan scale. says whatever the fuck he wants. Oh, that's a good point. That's yeah. a good point. But he's not, I don't know, I wouldn't call him family friendly. No, but I didn't say I wanted to be family. I just want to be, I want to be, I don't want, I, that's what I'm saying. You're, I'm, I don't want Sandler's um, template. Uh-huh. I just want um, scale. I want scale. Ah, got it. So I want the got idea it. that I want to be successful enough to employ my friends to what our friends are doing with us. You know, when yeah. we ran into each other and I was, in, I was uh, with Rogan and you were with- and You uh, changed my life. Yeah, I, but it was just like that. That idea that like you go out, you went out with Bird a few times, right? Like, yeah. these guys are doing the thing that I'm talking about that I eventually want s- scaled up as well. Like, I would like to do that. Too. Yeah, I just want to employ my friends, get my friends to make money with me, so we can all mutually lift each other up. I think that's the literal ultimate goal. Whether or not it's film, television, stand up, podcast, whatever it is, like I just want it to be a um, this wonderful incestuous pot of yeah. sicko fun weirdos. I love that. And I love that, you know, Sandler, there's like four or five guys who are in every movie and those are his dorm mates in NYU. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Well, that's loyalty, man. There's something yeah. that goes along with that because this comedy thing breaks it up. Like, you know, it's hard. Like, we, we get to see each other only once in a great while. Sure. A lot of us get to see each other and you say hi, it's great to see people, but there is something about staying loyal to the people that you think are talented and funny and good that... Uh, you want to help rise up because in turn they all get their comeuppance and then you hope it's a, yes. you hope, like Oprah baby I'm trying to pass it on baby yeah you get a career you get, you a, get career. a career you get a career look under your chair what do they say the boats the tide rises all boats or something the so tide you does up, rise all boats something yeah. like that yeah, yeah. So, except if you have a dinghy and then you just you know get the fuck out of the ocean that's the ocean. true yeah. you're Robert Wagner that's right dude push the lady off I don't want to talk about um, Epstein's Island because I know you were a, a, a platinum member but oh, yeah, uh, yeah. sorry about that yeah Lolita and say it he killed himself baby <laughs> um, tell me some dates plug whatever you want to plug oh, sure. say hello to the people and the fans and do all that jazz I'm all over the road 2020 is going to be crazy uh, marknormancomedy.com San Francisco Tampa you name it Chicago Vancouver Toronto you name it I'm all over the place I got a podcast Tuesdays with stories it's wonderful with Joe List yes the, the hilarious Joe List the herpes riddled the uh, Beantown native it's just like this we shoot the shit and we talk about the road and comedy and yep. we yuck it up and we're a couple of straight white douches and uh, you really yeah. are you're both straight white douches Twitter Instagram for videos and Praise Allah. There you go, baby. Go check him out. Go to marknormancomedy.com, right? You got it. We'll put all that information in the description below. Um, I appreciate you joining me because this was, I know it was uh, it was a scramble for me. You have no idea what happened because I had to. Oh, yeah? Oh, my God, Anything dude. Right? Well, just because like the podcast people fell out, something happened in LA. Uh, so I didn't plan on doing one here. I wanted to relax and do shows and have fun and kick it. Sure. And then we had tried to do one in LA. You were there. It didn't yeah. work out. Yeah. But I'm glad you uh, uh, did it. And, Thanks uh, for having me. Dude, man. and I shout out to Gas Digital for having us yes. in this motherfucker. This was huge. Mr. Uh, Luis Ye Gomez, Luis. shout out to the Gomez for, for putting us in this motherfucker. Yeah, because I, I appreciate Gas Digital for housing us here in New York. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, guys. Uh, uh, I will be uh, back next week with a Thanksgiving episode uh, where I'm sure I'll talk heavy shit about it because I fucking hate that holiday. You go I solo you. on these? Uh, I, I go solo Whoa. on, ne- uh, yeah, some of them. I, sometimes I do solo stuff. I don't know how you do it. Uh, you know how I do it, man. My brain works. You're quick, man. I'm you're, a you're quick a fast little guy. Red. Um, so I usually do this: say one word or one phrase to take us out. You're going to end the episode. So one word and or one phrase, whatever you want. Go ahead. Mmm. You gotta love a good mick. In here, we pour whiskey, 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 whiskey. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard. Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are beautiful. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Ginger's all hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger, I like to drink.
passengers.